we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, like a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. So I just wanted to take this moment and come to you and to be able to bring us into the Word of the Lord and to say that today we are here to be together in His Word as we do at this time on Sunday morning in this 8.30 setting. And so I welcome you to join with us by sharing it. Uh, I've been told before, if you share, I believe it's like, it will actually connect with all of those that you communicate with as well online and let them know to also join with you at this time. And that would help us also to get word out uh, here at a, at a moment's notice that we are on line of sharing God's Word together. And also feel free to communicate your message of, of uh, request, or more importantly, what I believe is our praise unto the Lord in worship through the message and the service and to give God glory. I want to start out before I get right into the Word just thanking you for how you work and join and be a part with us. And I thank the Lord for that. And I don't take that lightly. Because I know that it has to take that step of faith that you are in agreement with us through your tithing and through your offerings and being able to help us to continue as we reach out into the harvest together to make a difference. And that's what it's all about, is trying and somehow... All I can say is somehow through since the middle to, uh, of last March in 2020, the Lord has so graciously touched in your hearts and lives that you have continued to participate and t take part with us in worship of giving, of your tithing, and of your general offering, and of your special offerings. And I thank you from. From my heart to yours, I don't, as I said, I don't take that lightly at all. And we know that's the only way through that obedience of our working together will be what we can continue to do. So don't let up in any fashion. If anything, if the Lord can so touch you, if you're able to do above and beyond uh, more in many ways of giving and being a part of areas, I know that the Lord will continue to bless you to help us to do that. And uh, so we can continue to impact and keep things open and going forward so we can continue to stay in touch with you, even if it's online. But don't forget as well, right now we're still doing 1030 a.m. service in-house. We're going to continue to do that as, as, as much as we can on, at, at possible uh, we pray through the near future that as we continue almost, I feel in my heart almost entertain things daily, but at least weekly to look in what, how soon we can try to begin to open up other avenues of ministry and uh, those type areas. All I'm try, what I've been trying to do is at least keep a certain thing of uh, 10.30 a.m. as well as uh, in a with our children's worship at the same time, if we are able to keep that open and we're back doing that for the ministry of your children as well while we are in the sanctuary at that time to worship as well as we're trying to keep the door open on our Wednesday evening 
Uh, that way you're welcome to come in in the sanctuary and be here with me as I'm speaking or teaching and sharing, uh, as well as for our children with our girls' clubs ministry and our Royal Rangers ministry uh, and our even our youth of our provision ministry. We, we still have the face mask as they come in with the temperature checks. We still have where they are uh, with the spacing and the distance in those areas. We're still being very uh, uh, watchful and, and being able, and I appreciate so much our leadership working with me in those areas for our Wednesday as well as our children's church Sunday morning. That comes with the temperature checks as well as the, the mask in to where they can be seated with. And so we're just still doing all of that. But we're inviting you as this begins to open up more. Don't wait till we open up other areas of avenues of ministry. We need to see you as this opens up more uh, in those that we already have open, so we will know that more people are beginning to get out. And as you see that door opening up for you, uh, whether it's through vaccines whether it's through these areas we need to see the increase of your attendance in those areas of our 10 30 a.m service as well as our wednesday evening setting that we're trying to do in those areas so we can read off of those areas how we can best expand into other areas of ministry that we can begin to open up on whether it's considering in the future back in our Sunday school in-house whether it's being able to consider opening up more of our intercessory prayer service for more to come in in those areas so I'm just highlighting to let you know what we're trying to do there I, I, I've got to know that more are coming in those areas that we already have opened up. So that will warrant me enough to see direction to open up other avenues in the near future that we can get to in a rightly way. All right. So keep that in mind. I know I'm taking a few extra minutes this morning, but I felt like that was necessary to share because I don't get a lot of time with you at different times. Perhaps you can share with others of what I'm sharing with you in this 8.30 setting. Maybe I can highlight it a little bit more again in our 10.30 setting this morning of today. Let's spend the next few minutes in the Word of the Lord for the reason that we're really here, shall we? I want to start in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 this morning. I believe that as the Lord began to speak at the very beginning of the creation of time and His reasons that He began to do it and to make things happen, that there was a time and a place of how God wanted things to be so designed so that really he could be worshipped and glorified in many ways. And so he, by speaking, when he in his presence, it creates what I touched on this past Wednesday evening in message, and I shared a phrase by saying, there is a shift. And I believe where God is, there is always a shift that happens in his presence and it makes it for me and you we could actually use the title today there's a shift in your atmosphere well let's just see what happened in the atmosphere of what was going on on the face of this earth when the presence of God desired and showed up and began to speak well, in verse 1, it says of Genesis chapter 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The earth, it says, was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. We don't know how long that was in existence, whether that was part of this of the sixth day and seventh day that he rested of the journey, perhaps, and it could very well be tied in 
but it just doesn't give us that clarity. Because the Bible does speak that really to the Lord, what we call a day is 24 hours in our day. The Bible says to the Lord, a day is as of a thousand years, and as of a thousand years, a day. So is this over a six to seven thousand year period? Well, time is not of essence to the Lord. It now is of essence to me and you because from the time of birth, we are actually already growing and aging in our life to where when we get in latter years of age, we really are born to die in a physical way. The Bible even expresses it that life is as of a vapor, that it soon vanishes away, it disappears, or we see that our time on earth ends. The Bible also says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Do we see God, yes, who is a God of love, but He's also a God of judgment? So we begin to see the layout. Let's read on, because at the end of verse 2, he says, and I hope you have gotten your Bibles and turn with me. That's what we normally do in this 830 setting. Instead of like we do perhaps on Wednesday night or in the 1037, we, uh, 1030 setting, we usually uh, put scriptures on, the, on, on the, the screen and all for you to see and have, and you can follow with us in that area. But here it says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. But then, while it was hovering, when God speaks, things happen. Amen? I know there's a commercial out there about an individual by the name of E.F. Hutton, because as it says, when E.F. Hutton speaks, really everything else, just according to that commercial, you know, things happen or other things go to silent. It creates a movement. But i got to tell you, when God speaks, there is no one, if I know anybody else, that matches what moves or shifts. See, you see where I'm coming with the title of this message. When He speaks, it shifts in the atmosphere. What happened in the atmosphere when God spoke? What shifted? Well, God spoke the words and said, Let there be light, and there was light. There was a shift. There was a movement from Him speaking. There was an authority. That's why I know I'm jumping ahead for just a moment, but the Bible says there is power of life and death in the tongue. So if God speaks to us in this way of where it creates a shift and a movement. He also wanted to let us know in the New Testament of His Word that there is power in our speaking, in our tongue, that creates a shift in circumstances. And so this morning I desire to speak life, not death. I want to speak victory and you going forward in God so He can remove those things that would separate you from Him and you would have Him whole in your life. So when God said, let there be light, the shift, the movement, the answer, the response, and there was light. He spoke, and it says He saw the light and that it was good. And then he divided the light from the darkness. And then it says, and God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. But then God continues to speak. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament. From the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So now we see what a firmament he named and called. What did he do? Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. 
He created a place where he could dwell from what he was creating on this earth. He had created the heavens and the earth, the Bible said, but he called that firmament the heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9, then God said, in other words, another shift happened. Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. So God called the dry land earth. Do you see how it just lays out? And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. I need to tell you, I can just see the intricate making of the creation of our own body that lets me know there has to be a God, a creator. For us to be, and then for even the earth as this scientist has even given proof to, that if the earth was just one just a little closer, I mean, just a movement closer to the sun, then life could not survive on the earth. Or if it was moved one movement back from the sun, I'm not talking about the rotation that stopped, I'm talking about closer or farther. In a perfect place, it allows life or it would freeze to death or it would burn up. It, only God could do that, church. Mere coincident, mere an accident, mere just something happening in that way. It cannot happen that way, church. It cannot. It's amazing. I've ridden down, and right now we're having some cold weather. Maybe not as cold as what you would feel from in Alaska or, or Antarctica or areas in, in those areas. But for me, even in, in Maryland here, it's fairly cold enough to... Put on a little more layers than what you would feel like by going outside to stay warm. But when I would ride down to a place not far from here called Oxford, Maryland, we have a ferry that crosses that location of land in the water of the Chesapeake Bay, of that inlet of the water there. But there were some ducks when I was there recently. And that cold water, it amazed me that they have just what they need to where they could dive under to find what they needed to feed upon in the water. And then they could come up, but they would survive in that cold water without the proper coat and all. And it just amazes me that God is able to give, and then animals that live in a desert environment that could not live in a cold environment. I could go on and on, but you see where I'm heading with this. It just shows that there has to me be a God and how He created, even as we continue to detail these things, it says that when he called the dry land earth in verse 10 of Genesis 1, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass. There was a shifting. He would speak and it would come forth what he spoke. The herb that yields seed and seeds and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 13, it says, So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs. Isn't that amazing? Signs, these lights in the heaven, for signs and seasons and for days and years. It's amazing how you can follow and hear one's talk that they can pick out certain ways of stars and how that night, 
when the clouds would open up, they can find their way if they're in a vessel of a ship without the technology that we are blessed to have today in all of these different ships or cargo vessels or cruise liners, things of that nature that are so high-tech. Great to have all of that. But God provided just enough that for thousands of years once have been able to find their way around before all of this technology come on the scene. And when God did that, He even went from those lights in the firmament of the heavens and give light to earth, and it was so. But look at verse 16. Then God made two great lights, the lesser to rule the night. He said the greater light to rule the day. And then those other lights, He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. So we know that in this we have the sun and the moon along with the stars. Then he finished by saying of verse 18 of how it was good. He said to rule over the day and over the night to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning now were the fourth day. But then God added more. Look at verse 20. Then God said, let the waters abound with the abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. And fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Can you not see the shift that God did as he spoke things into existence? And even of the animals of the earth. And then it said in verse 24, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. And now he creates the cattle the creeping thing, the beast of the earth, it's each according to its kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. But then God said what? Look at verse 26. Let us make man in our image. Let me tell you, as wonderful as the animals are on the face of the earth, They're not made in the image of God. That's why when you get further in the Word of God, and if we start making images, and we start letting that be worshipped in the place of God, like animals and other things, and even even human beings that were getting ready to read, that was created, they're created, the Bible said, look at verse 26, let us make man in our image, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus even said in John chapter 1, He was there in the beginning as the Word of God. The living, breathing Word, not just words of a page. I need you to understand the Bible is why God said to hide His Word in your heart. It's not to hide on pages of Scriptures only. And I'm telling you, if you look at this through how God created and how He put things in place, and He said, according to our likeness we create man, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. As much as we love the animals of this world, And they have a special place. I'm telling you, you can't hardly replace a dog or a cat because they give unconditional love. There's a lot of people that seem to, by their actions, it seems that they almost love their animals more than they love their own children. That should not be so, but the reason why they will allow that to be replaced is because the children think for themselves, has their self-will, has perhaps their desire. Maybe they're acting more like the dad or the mom 
in personality. And because they show at times that resistance the parents receive from the dog or the cat, they receive what we like to call unconditional love. In other words, you can get onto them and they'll still lick you in the face or they'll still sit on your lap. You can correct them and they'll still, next time you get, come home from work and you walk in that door, it's going to be like the very first time and they just jump all over you and everything. Well, the children don't normally do that, do they, when you come home all the time. Sometimes you're already tired and weary and they have sort of different directions in themselves or your companion may be having a difficult day as well as you had a challenge in one and things may not go too well but yet there is the dog or the cat that's giving you that, that unconditional love I know you know all of this and I know I gotta bring this message in quick but what I'm wanting you to understand is that God so loved the world. Now let me just skip from all of this that God created man and woman, even though they disobeyed Him for what He told them not to partake of the tree of good and evil or the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. The woman Eve that was created to be there with man in the garden so that they could be able to be there and in the cool of the day the Bible said that God would show up and they would walk with them and they would be able to communion but then there was a deceptive of where Satan in the form of a serpent came. Eve fell into that deception. The one thing that God told them not to partake of was of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the tree of life. And because of the deception of what the serpent or Satan in the form of a serpent said to Eve, she fell into that deception, partook of the fruit, gave to Adam, Adam partook of the fruit, and their eyes, the Bible said, was open to know the difference between good and evil. At that time, they were naked, but they didn't know they were. At that time, they were not separated from God, but from that disobedience, it brought that separation. They knew they were naked. They experienced, the Bible said, shame to the point that they went and got fig leaves and to cover their bodies. How did they know it? Because they were made in the image of God. They had partaken that something that had separated them from God. And now they knew by that that there were certain things of a moral. Are you hearing me? They knew that certain things that was catching now, their eyesight was impacting their heart in a way that did not seem right. And they were trying to cover what seemed and felt wrong. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> they didn't have all the scripture. They didn't even have all the prophets. They didn't have any areas of even the conviction except when God had created them. They rightly and right away knew they had separated themselves from God because when God came into the garden at the time he had come in the way he had before, the Bible says he was calling out, where are you at? I'm paraphrasing, of course. And the Bible said they had went and hid themselves. Nobody had told them they had separated themselves. Nobody had told them they had uh, that, that, that they had come to this place to where they needed to cover themselves, now hide themselves. But that's because we are created in His image. Let me tell you, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we're born into this world in a form of, once we come to the place of knowing right and wrong, we need to know that we need a Savior. It may come to ones at an earlier age than others, but you know that there's certain things that don't start out feeling right. Now, you may get later in your life and override those things, and now you don't even feel ashamed or wrong about those things that at the beginning didn't feel right. That's because it was separating you from God. What you don't want is lose that conviction or that conscience that God has put within us and to move beyond that to where you don't feel that separation 
Because that separation is what God wants you to experience of a need to come back together with Him. And how He created that for me and you was through His Son, Jesus Christ. And when Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, God also said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, do you know his son is truth? John 14, 6 says that Jesus said to one of the disciples by the name of Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So from John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the truth, as Ephesians 4 15 says to speak love, it says to speak love in truth. We got to speak love, but it's got to be in truth. He told us, John 14, 6, he's the truth. I know I'm being repetitious from some previous messages, but we need to see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, aren't you glad you and myself are a whosoever this morning? Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So in the name of Jesus, as we close this message today, be saved, be set free, be re revived, be restored, be renewed, because He cares what's going on in your life. He is here for and through you. And I invite you today to join with me as we go to the Lord in prayer for His will to be done in your life, in your families, in your work, in your daily routine of life, that He would become the forefront if He's not already there. Let's pray. Father, we love You. We thank You for Your presence. We give You glory. Now, God, we know You're coming soon through Your Son by sending Him. Even Jesus, You said, He doesn't know. Jesus said, I don't even know the day nor the hour. But when you send Jesus, Father, you said that the dead in Christ would be raised and those that are alive would be caught up with them in the air. There in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 through 18. And we give you praise that we are lifting up our heads this morning. We are knowing that our redemption draws nigh. And we know that you are making a way where there seems to be no way. We accept it in agreement in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we give you praise. Amen and amen. Would you right now, before we go off the air, just text and let us know what God is doing in your life, or even later, go online, even at eastoncog.org. Send us, let us know, and communicate with us on, on our website. And be a part with things that are taking place and all that is going on. And we definitely want to keep you updated. God bless you. Today is my prayer. Until we meet again. Amen.